Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk data and review the Commission's new common rules on who can use and access data generated by connected products and objects across all economic sectors. Want to know more? Stay with us. Data is the new oil. It's essential for innovation by both businesses and public authorities and lies at the center of the digital transformation. It's also growing exponentially. From 33 zettabytes in 2018 to 175 zettabytes expected in 2025. But it is an untapped potential. 80% of industrial data is never used, and the one that's used is in the hands of a relatively few large companies. To unlock this untapped potential and create a real single market for data, the Commission came up in 2020 with a European strategy for data. And a key pillar of it is the Data Act proposed in February 2022. Now, what is it about? The Data Act lays new common rules on who can use and access data in the EU. It is based on the premise that the right to use non-personal data is valuable and seeks to ensure that value from such data is allocated fairly among the different players in the data economy. Here's the words of the European Commissioner for Internal Market, Thierry Breton. When we use a product who owns the data, it generates and who can access it. This is the question that we're trying to answer with the Data Act. We want consumers to be in control of the data they generate and we want to better organise the sharing of this data among market players because access to this data is key for innovation. What it really comes down to is that companies will have to open up their non-personal data that is, the data generated by the use of their services or products. According to the Commission, the Data Act will ensure fairness in the digital environment, stimulate a competitive data market, open opportunities for data-driven innovation, and make data more accessible for all while increasing safeguards for consumers. It will also lead to new, innovative services and more competitive prices for aftermarket services and repairs of connected objects. By making more data available for reuse, the new rules are expected to create 270 billion euros of additional GDP by 2028. But let's take a closer look at the main provisions. To begin with, the Data Act would grant users of connected products or services, such as connected vehicles or industrial machinery, a new right to access the data generated by them, which is often exclusively used by manufacturers, and to share it with third parties to provide aftermarket or other data-driven innovative services. It maintains incentives for manufacturers to continue investing in high-quality data generation by covering their transfer-related costs and excluding use of shared data in direct competition with their product. The new rules also address the unfairness of contractual terms in data, sharing contracts between businesses, in order to protect small businesses. And they foresee ways for public institutions to use data held by private companies in exceptional circumstances. For instance, to respond to a public emergency, such as floods or wildfires, or to fulfil a legal mandate in the public interest when data is not otherwise available. The Data Act will allow customers to effectively switch between different cloud data processing service providers, making it easier for them to move data and apps from private photo archives to entire business administrations from one provider to another without extra costs. There will also be safeguards against unlawful non-personal data transfers in the EU and member states will need to appoint competent authorities to apply and enforce the new rules. But there are points of contention. One of the main points of contention is the obligation to share data instead of voluntary agreements and incentives to encourage companies to do so. Svetlana Stoilova is advisor on the digital economy at Business Europe. The public consultation of the Commission shows that 68% of business respondents share already data with partners. So there is a data sharing culture in Europe, which is based on contractual freedom and adequate compensation. The Data Act must nurture that culture and also set enforceable obligations to parties receiving data. 
I underline enforceable obligations because in the cases related to sharing trade secrets data, we are concerned how their confidentiality can be enforced. Business Europe also asks for more clarity regarding the exceptional circumstances that would allow public sector bodies to claim access to data from private companies. Business to government data sharing must be carefully balanced with democratic rights and democratic accountability. And for this reason, we would support sharing data when public emergencies occur and are declared, but not any broader obligation to hand in data to authorities, which can easily become the norm and be used as a norm rather than the exception. The extent to which micro and small companies should be exempt from the data sharing rules is also questioned by the European Parliament. Pilar del Castillo is the Parliament's rapporteur on this file. The Data Act can be an absolute game changer if it can create a data agile ecosystem that enables easy access to an almost infinite amount of high quality industrial data. A further challenge is to strike the right balance between access to data and the need to protect trade secrets in order not to hinder innovation and competitiveness for European businesses. Another point is how to improve the conditions under which businesses and consumers can switch between providers of cloud services in the EU. Bayuk, the EU consumer protection organization, stressed that the proposed data act should ensure that customers are in control of their data, for instance, through a more simple to exercise data portability right that extends beyond personal data, so that they can, for example, take all their data from one service to another if they want to. Marian Fernandez is Senior Digital Policy Officer at Beuk. The Data Act is important because it can give consumers who own connected devices the power to decide who to share their data with and for what reason. For example, a third party could repair your smart fridge at a cheaper price than the manufacturer. But without the right protections, consumers could be locked in with the devices, manufacturers, be subject to more complex contracts and be pushed to give access to data. The proposal is now in the hands of the Council and the Parliament, who are defining their positions. We'll keep monitoring discussions for you. But in the meantime, check out Tambiama Mandiega's full policy brief on the APRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.